All right. Well, you know, I think we could probably get started since we're recording. Um, so I, I did want to share some of our updates in terms of what we're trying to focus on with product. Um, so Bex and Pineapple did some really cool stuff, uh, set up a Google form. So we're going to try an experiment. Um, on the engineering side, what we're going to do is have a way to manually add ley line points and you know create as many categories as we want. So based off of the polls that you guys filled out, we're going to have a number of new activities that we're going to have uh, for anybody to participate in. And we'll do just manual verifications for now and grant you ley line points directly, and it'll show up on your points history um, as you do them. So uh, in doing so, we'll get a sense of, hey, what are the more popular activities? Is it daily sleep check-in? Is it blood donations? Is it vol volunteering at a local uh, nonprofit? And uh, as we see more activity or you know, more people using a certain features, we'll onboard it onto the platform and start automating it. So Bex, I don't know if you want to do the screen share and walk through what that looks like. I think that can be pretty what handy the as form a preview. Looks like? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah give me a second and i'll uh, pull it up okay sorry to put you on the spot there <laughs> it's okay you can continue i'll let you know when i've got it <laughs> yeah um so so yeah that's what we're working on for for this coming week and uh we are in a bit of a transition mode because what we've done recently is we actually start to spin down our outsourcing team uh working on the engineering side uh, we'd originally brought them on to uh bootstrap us particularly with blockchain development but now that uh, we're starting to ramp up uh, with more and more internal developers, we are starting to wind down on outsourcing because uh, they're it's pretty expensive, <laughs> frankly speaking, and uh, your budget's a little bit tight right now. Um, so it, we haven't been able to push out too many backend features, um, but uh, coming this week, we're going to ramp up, uh, I think, three new volunteers, and we've got 12 student ambassadors that have just started as well. So we are starting to build an army. It's getting kind of crazy uh, and a lot of fun. Um, what else? What other updates to share? Uh, this is probably too much of a spoiler, but I think I already gave it away on a podcast. But uh, we are connecting with uh, NACEF. It's uh, the North American Scholastic Esports Federation. Um, this is a nonprofit group that actually... Uh, designs esports uh, and gaming programs that are focused on enabling learning. So, you know, in particular, like skill development, um, uh, using gaming to like problem solve and develop leadership skills, etc. Um, so, they've got about a thousand high schools that they are um, they have like clubs in, and that's both in North America, but I think Korea and Australia and a couple other countries too. So that's a massive, massive partnership, and they're super excited to work with us because what they've already, um, what a program they're doing now is actually a daily check-in for health. And so they, you know, they saw what we're doing and they're like, this is amazing because they don't have a tech platform for that. So the ley line profiles are actually going to be the students' profiles for all the good and community service that they're doing, which is really critical to their development and their reputation. So that's super exciting news. Like, uh, honestly, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to integrate that. And it, it's going to be able to create a ton of educational value. So uh, very, very I'm exciting. A, I'm a bit late. Can some can people just fill me in? Or if it's oh, yeah, no problem. Oh, yeah, okay. Ariel, we just uh, volunteered you to develop the whole platform next week. So thanks a lot. <laughs> cool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> uh, no, I was just talking about, we were talking about uh, some of the features we're going to focus on. Bex is going to show us a new form that we're going to use to submit uh, any kind of volunteer activity, or not any, but a number of different volunteer opportunities. Um, but I was talking about uh, one of our upcoming partnerships with a uh, Scholastic educa or Education uh, Esports uh, Federation. Sorry for the noise back there. Uh, <clears throat> that's uh, focused on, it uh, has like a thousand high school clubs. And uh, yeah, we're going to uh, have a really cool partnership where they're leveraging a lot of our daily check-in features to build up their digital resume on Leyline. So very exciting stuff. Cool, yeah. yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, do you want me to walk through very briefly the uh, verification? Totally. Form? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
Um, so basically, we were just trying to find a good way right now for people who either donate or volunteer to just verify that with us so we can reward points. Yeah, that's great because like the the only points we have to collect right now are through computer power and through just the 10. And like if there are more opportunities to collect more, that'll help a ton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that we're definitely looking uh, to implement more of those. We have like polls going on recently to see what activities people are really wanting to engage with and um we're gonna look to get those sorted out so your first page here is um just your simple email address and then you click what activity you completed so i'm just gonna put a test in here okay so uh here you got donated blood volunteered at an organization or donated goods goodwill or salvation for me that sort of thing um, those are like the main three that are easy for us to implement on the LinkedIn website and are very common and easy for people to do. Uh, but we also do have an other section here in case he does something like needs bone marrow. Oh, am I cutting out now? Uh, so yeah, so that we have an other section here that is for in case somebody does something like donates plasma or bone marrow or an organ, you know, the outliers a little bit. Um, if you hit other and you go, it then leads you to another page to just describe your donation or volunteer activity in more detail so we know what you did since it is one of separate from the three choices that we have down. Um, so you'll just like answer that and then it takes you to the next page, which is what every other option takes you to, which is just the name of the organization that you donated um, to or volunteered for and then what day did you donate and volunteer just so we have that on file. Um, I'm just gonna like put in like ah, a little test, and then it asks asks you to please upload evidence, um, such as receipts, certificates, letters of from the organization, um, letters of recommendation, just something that shows us uh, quote unquote proof that you did your donation, and uh, we can back it up with the information that you provided in the previous forms. And then you submit, and uh, we can get you your leyline points. Oh, one thing I can also add is that uh, we do not have daily sleep check-in on this page because we're actually going to implement it straight up. Uh, so essentially, it'll be kind of equivalent to the daily exercise check-in. Uh, we have to like figure out the UI, but it'll probably just be on the impact page, and it'll be like the next thing you can click. Um, either that or the daily check-in on the header that shows up, uh, you know, at the top of the page might just drive you to the impact page where you can kind of click those two or trying mm -hmm. to see what's the easiest scenario. <clears throat> but, yeah. uh, that was definitely the, I think it was the number one polled item, right? The daily check-in for sleep. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Which is good because I need to do better. With that so. <laughs> yeah no uh, I don't sleep. yeah this is this is an interesting one honestly well because like one uh proper sleep is actually one of the most fundamental healthy things you could do if you don't get proper sleep it does so much damage to your brain and your body and your immune system uh makes you more prone to cancer and weight loss weight gaining uh it's it's really massive um, so the uh, recommended amount of sleep is at the absolute minimum seven hours and ideally eight hours. Uh, even hitting six hours is actually still pretty bad for you. Um, and there's a very interesting study in that um, we run this massive experiment on sleep deprivation twice a year, and it's called daylight savings time. So that daylight savings time, when you lose that one hour, the amount of heart attacks and car accidents spikes hardcore. And it's just very consistent every time we do a time zone shift. So even just uh, losing and shifting one hour of sleep really messes you up. Uh, so it's really fascinating. So, you know, we are trying to promote this idea of like, hey, listen, target seven to eight hours of sleep per day because it's like huge for you. Um, but that's, that's very tricky. You know, I think, um, we're going to see if it makes a difference for individuals, but I think the end goal is we want it tied to a sleep app. Um, so I believe that, uh, excuse me, I believe that Fitbit and Google and Apple, um, APIs also have sleep tracking. Um, so I think we will be able to get the data pretty easily. And it's the same scenario where 
if you upgrade or connect your Fitbit device for your exercise and your sleep, you basically get a two for one in terms of ley line point generation, assuming that you've done the exercise and sleep. So that's kind of the 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 pathway for us going forward is throwing any nice connections. Jeremy, I, I have a question uh, regarding volunteer hours and things like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a vision somewhere down the road where volunteer organizations can uh, register with ley lines so that, for instance, if I work for an organization, um, there's a more of an automatic process to to document my volunteer hours or whatnot? Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to be the goal, which is, uh, you know, I think we'll do our own outreach, but also have a submission form. And we'll likely need to manually review it because we want to make sure there's a lot of legitimacy there. So there's, you know, we'll probably have a in an audit in place, which is, are they rated on Charity Navigator and GuideStar and stuff like that, um, that they're adhering to standard nonprofit principles and transparency, um, that they're a legitimate organization and not just like a, a guy in a garage, like with a website. Um, but yeah, so I think absolutely. And, you know, we kind of always target this idea that we want to supercharge every nonprofit on the planet or every humanitarian cause. So yeah, we're just going to keep on adding more and more uh, groups onto the platform. And the, the secret, or rather, one of the ways to scale that is we're going to uh, need to enable um, geolocation. So we're actually working on an iOS app right now, and it'll just be like a very simple proof of concept where you can do your daily check-ins. Um, but the benefit is that because you're on your mobile app, we can actually do geolocation. So you can actually search for local uh, volunteer activities within like a 10 to 15 mile radius. Um, so then you can kind of, you know, you know exactly what's available near you that you could participate in and then get your ley line points. Um, so, awesome. so yeah, yeah, that's one of the plans for sure. Uh, and I don't know how difficult it is. Like I assume it's, it's pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna, I don't want to, commit to that uh, before I talk to the engineering team. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's a cool thing, like, with tech these days, like, so many of these features have, you know, built out libraries and toolkits already that we just basically, you know, snap a bunch of stuff uh, that's already freely available and then plug it into the platform. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so, yeah, anyway, that, that's the plan for... Um, for the manual verification process for now. And so we've got uh, Bex and Pineapple. I think that'll be running the show there. And in case it starts to go bananas, we've got uh, 12 new student ambassadors that have joined. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, people power now on the team. So it's uh, very, very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, actually, another thing we could probably go through, uh, Pineapple has also prepared quite a number of user guides, which is really phenomenal. And I really want to give him a shout out. Uh, Pineapple, would you like to kind of walk through the documentation you put together? You don't have to like, just show them like, you know, the framework or the organization, if you don't mind. You're on mute, just, say, just to let you know. <laughs> Awkward silence. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> just embrace it jeremy just embrace yeah it. i know I, sh I need to get used to this <clears throat> or i should like pretend like i'm frozen on screen just to, like... <laughs> oh i think i got an so emoji the... now why did you do this <laughs> like I, I i had an idea um <laughs> Jer jeremy you, you want to come on the yang yang roundtable podcast one day yeah, sure. I, I mean, I'm oh, okay. I'm down to like you know do any kind of like anywhere we can go to just talk to people and spread yeah. the message and let them know we're trying to do something good here. Happy to talk to anybody. Really. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I can I can do like one interview on my man channel and one interview with them. We can. We can awesome. That yeah. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Um. But yeah, you know, I think uh, you know, we we're all just humans, so I I'm willing to talk to anybody. We you know, it's, Excellent. Uh, Excellent. it's time to bring people together. Yeah. That that's the thing I always hated about the the corporate world. From sometimes, not only that, but like all of these hierarchies that are like, 
holier than thou art kind of attitudes that like oh you're like i'm the main manager and you're just like a worker here and like all this and then and then i'm like you know what like you said we're, we're all just humans and it's like i want to like like explore my full potential of what i have to offer to the world i'm sure that you do too but sometimes these hierarchies are just so unnecessary and dehumanizing it's like i have more hits than you i have more subscribers than you and like you don't have like ten thousand subscribers yet so i can't do anything with you right now and it's like you know what let's just like be friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i agree there i mean i think um there's probably this we're at this threshold moment where we've got to take a step back and really reevaluate how society functions and you know that that was a big realization for me is that we can change things. We can improve things. Uh, we also have to like start and come together to do that and really start helping each other. Um, and maybe it's a blessing in disguise, the turmoil that we're all going through right now, because it's going to motivate people to rethink things and step up and just be brave and say, all right, let's, let's do something. Oh, yeah. Cause there's like really big problems well, here. Well, that's why my, my channel's name is Rev it's revolutionary thinking is the name of my channel. So it's it's basically what's going on. It's it's it was like uh, ten years ago that like I made it. It's kind of like a precursor to what's going on now. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hello, Justin. Good to see you, man. Hello, hello. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good. Ignore my message on a on a Slack, by the way, Jeremy. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so yeah, it's oh, go ahead, Bex. Oh, I was going to say, um, Pineapple is having some issues regarding their microphones cutting out. So mm. I can run us briefly through the user guides if you want that. All right. That's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bex. Yeah, no worries. Um, let's see if we can get going. All right. We got some people later. So this is, uh, this is our Leyline user guides. Um, Kind of landing page which you can get this link it's now on our new upgraded start here channel uh on discord it's the second one down and does uh, the first link in there and this is just an a user guide for anybody who's a who like first joins or if you you know are going to try and get boink and leyline going on another device just any questions you have you'll probably be able to find some answers here um so our first one is just to sign up how to sign up with leyline and it takes you through the steps from the get-go from when you first land on leyline.gg on how to make an account um and we have all our different steps you have via google via facebook um if you want to sign up via twitter or via email and but uh so yeah this this just takes you all the way through to when you get on the wait list which eventually when we no longer have a wait list we can upgrade this um but then you have your next steps which is creating your science united account downloading boink uh, connecting your SU and Leyline accounts and signing up for Discord and joining our server. So this also just takes you through very quickly how to go with Science United. Um, our Discord one gives you options. You can sign up via leyline.gg or you can sign up via discord.com. And uh, if you do discord.com, you can run Discord right in your browser or you can sign up with a desktop app. And this shows you how to sign up with the desktop app. And then once you sign up with the desktop app, how to join our server. Um, and then we also have how to synchronize your Leyline account with your Science United account, which is very important. So you can earn points, which is <laughs> very big with us. Um, and this, again, just step by step, very laid out for everyone on how to do it, what you're looking for. And um, with installing Boink, uh, Paul set up really well how to do it with Windows, Mac, Raspberry Pi, Li like, is it Linux? 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 It's, it's Linux. Linux. Okay. That's right, Linux. I've always confidently said Linux, and I, <laughs> but I don't think I've actually ever heard anybody say it to me. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, there yeah. you go. Um, Learn something new every day. I know, right? And then within that also, there are popular forms, so, which was crazy. So good job pineapple on this one because that was a beast of a <laughs> guy to do but 
breaks it down for every single system. So if you have any questions there. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm glad because pineapple, I gave him some help because I I did it myself and then like thing I'm I'm just kind of proud of me right now for figuring it out on my own, but I'm glad I could be of help too. <laughs> It was like it was like you guys were supposed to help me, and then I helped myself, and then I helped you guys figure out how I did it. <laughs> yeah, starting out, it's like uh, you kind of have to, starting out. We, we, I know from my perspective, when we first got in here, we were just bare bones <laughs> when it came to this, so we had to kind of like figure it out on our own. But it definitely helps because with troubleshooting, you can kind of see okay, like what do people need to know? What kind of things aren't necessarily clear right away? And those are all covered in these guides. So hopefully, there will be no more questions. For people that are coming in brand new but if they have questions we're right here in discord and can answer it for them um and then the final one is to install on android because boink is awesome and you can run it on your android phone and earn points without having to necessarily use your computer and uh, we have all of those as well and then at the bottom of our guide we just have important links that people might need and if they still need help they can contact us on the discord uh, but yeah, thank you again, guys. It's like it's really fantastic to have that. Um, and so now that that's uh, public, we can actually start implementing it on the site, and we'll probably plug in the guide specific to the actions you're about to take. So right now, in a tile for Boink uh, or volunteer computing, it's just learn more, but it kicks off to the Boink website. We'll actually replace that link and probably plug it in right here, so that way it's much more specific to uh, our implementation. And uh, probably also having a website as well. So probably on the support link, et cetera, or the FQ so, page. So I, I just want to double check, is an hour of computer donating power uh, 10 ley line points? Correct, um, correct. OK, OK. Because um, the, the philosophy there is that you know, we don't want a situation where you know, one person in you know, the US has a supercomputer and then a kid in india has a phone and you know the supercomputer person's going to have like you know a hundred times x ley line points for those contributions so to normalize it instead we just base it off of hours so that way uh it gives an opportunity for people that don't have really yeah. super powered yeah, it levels to... the playing field exactly exactly um, so I don't think we're going to budge from that, but in order to continue to reward and incentivize individuals that have like amazing souped up PCs, what we can do is have other intrinsic rewards like achievements or badges or their own special leaderboards. Um, and, you know, maybe like create some unique cosmetics that can't be sold or traded. Um, I think that's kind of the pathway. So at least there's always a sense of achievement and also to demonstrate it's like, hey, listen, I got the most badass PC rig, you know, check me out. Um, I think uh, that's still cool to have. It's just that we don't want to tie it to monetary rewards because we just don't want a situation where the rich get richer and the poor are stuck wherever they are. So that's the philosophy. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably need to write that down because... Uh, uh, maybe that should go into like our FAQs. I think uh, that's a pretty important one to share. I feel like that'll probably come up a couple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually have a question from Robert in chat. Uh, mm -hmm. Going back to volunteering, um, how about grassroots organizations that actually go into the neighborhoods like tenant unions that are active in a lot of cities? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're now starting to, it's becoming clear after a lot of our usage and testing that there are basically three categories of doing good that, oh, excuse me, this like uh, sparkling water has got me all gassy guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the first set of activities are individual wellness. So the concept there is that you can't save someone else from drowning if you can't swim yourself. So the same way, you can't help the world if you're not healthy and happy uh, on your own. So things like exercise and sleep and mindfulness and mood logging all really help to make you a better, healthier person. And so that's the first set of activities that we want to continue to incentivize and promote. Uh, the second is community activities. So local volunteering, blood donations, any number of things that are in your area uh, are also very good to, to have. And strengthening your community now enables you to step into strengthening the rest of the world. And that's where volunteer computing and Boink comes into play, where literally you're just doing 
kind of nothing. <laughs> and then you're just like accelerating cures for cancer and climate change and all that stuff. So, you know, we have this like very broad set of categories and then you can kind of pick and choose what are the things you want to participate in. So, yeah, we definitely went with the hardest possible scenario by starting with Boink. Um, but the main reason was we just saw that there's this massive opportunities connecting gamers to, um, to this project. And the project itself was like really struggling right. to retain users. Um, and and here's here's the thing that I think is important, Jeremy. It's like you you know like the stereotype in like a uh, popular culture that like gamers are just like in their mom's basements and like they're not sociable and stuff like that. I want to turn that on its head. Like, and this is really helping us turn that dumb stereotype on its head. Like, if it weren't for COVID right now. I'd be like taking a vacation or something like that, but that's not like smart. So it's like, yeah, I'm a gamer, but I also help with cancer research. I also have this like group of awesome people that I'm talking to. I'm interviewing like scientists and like, you know, you know, getting involved with like things that are really changing the world. So it's like, you can't call me one of these like lazy, lazy recluses anymore and like stuff like that. Like, like that's going to be the best. Like we make a comeback. Like, yeah, you know. That is like absolutely that. right, man. I'm with you 100%. Uh, and, and that was the opportunity that I saw in the gaming industry. It's like, man, there is so much potential here. And there's a desire, you know, particularly with the younger generation, which is like most gamers, um, they see the future and they care about it and they want to make things better. And the challenge is actually that there's not a clear pathway for them. There's not a platform that's going to connect them to all these different activities that align with, you know, the things that they like, which is gaming elements and motivators. So I think this is our opportunity. And the beauty behind Leyline is that this could be for anybody. You know, you just, all you need is a mobile phone and an internet connection. And you just check in every day and you're going to get healthier and you're going to get money for it. Um, but to me, it's really gamers of the vanguard because they get this stuff. They get like competition, cooperation, digital items, digital currencies. It's a very easy transition for them. And then we take 2.7 billion gamers and then they become, you know, the, the force that pulls the rest of the population into the ecosystem. So that's, that's the big strategy here. And yeah, it's going to be gamers that save the world. That's, uh, I, I'm pretty convinced that that's the future. Uh, anyway, I mean, 70% of the, of the world is going to be playing games regardless. <laughs> like, almost everyone's going to be a gamer in about another decade or so. Yeah, exactly. And, and the, <laughs> the people who I know who are like non-traditional gamers are like playing those really addictive cell phone games instead. And, like, I, I know what it feels to play, like, one of those cell phone games that are just, like, Candy Crush. And I know what it feels to, like, play a game that has, like, an actual plot line and a story and it makes you feel a part of it. And it's just, mm -hmm. like, a better sensation when it's not addictive, but it gives you some kind of uh, source of purpose. Even though that that per that, that, that thing, like, like when, when I'm really immersed in a game story, it's like it feels so awesome until the game is done and I beat it and then it's kind of like over and it's back to reality. But this is like a gaming story, a plot line that's, you know, built into real life. So I think that's just what, what makes it so amazing because it's actually changing the physical world we're living in rather than just looking at it at a screen. <laughs> That is so great. I'm so glad you, you, you see that so clearly, Ariel. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, I think that's the other challenge we want to address, which is um, gaming has become so prevalent. On average, uh, all people are spending about two hours gaming on, uh, per day. Uh, that is a massive amount of time spent in games. And it's only accelerating more because of the pandemic and quarantine and everyone's locked in their homes. We're seeing record engagement in gaming, record profits being made. And the concern that I have is we are actually turning to gaming to escape the horrors of reality. Like there is some really terrible stuff and gaming gives us this release and escape from that, which is good in that it helps our mental health, but it's bad in that we start getting disconnected from reality. So when you become escaped and disconnected from reality, you actually don't feel the problems as much. And then you're not incentivized to actually do something about it. 
So we're getting further and further away and actually less motivated to do good things and solve problems. So that's the, that is the uh, focus for Leyline is to bridge that together. So we still want to celebrate and be a part of this virtual world and really have it flourish and powered by this e economy of doing good things in the real world. So you're not stuck all day on a computer because you're like, oh man, I got to do my exercise today. I should just get off my couch and start doing something. Or it's like, oh man, you know what? I wouldn't mind getting a, another Bitcoin gift card. Maybe I should go donate some blood or I should go like volunteer at the soup kitchen. So that's the idea is that we're still going to bring together these real world communities and individual wellness and still have the joy of gaming on top of that. Uh, so yeah, that, that's like the grand vision is that we create this renaissance of not just people uh, doing good and gamifying that, but even onboarding games onto the platform that are literally solving real problems, like, you know, mapping protein uh, oh, folding, et yeah. cetera. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. And, you know, I think that's the thing is that um, Leyline's just got broad human appeal. And one of my personal goals is actually to set up Leyline that it becomes a form of universal basic income, where everybody, you know, can essentially get Leyline points for relatively low cost. And that essentially converts into real cash value over time. And that means that, you know, people can survive. They can, like, buy food and pay for rent. And, you know, not to say that we're going to be able to pay out that much, but that's the pathway. And, um, you know, I think by doing that, that's going to alleviate so many of the problems that we have today because it's so fundamental. Poverty and economic distress is so uh, is at the heart and root of a lot of our uh, polarization today uh, when you really dig down into it. Uh, but in terms of civic engagement, I also agree with you. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, in terms of civic engagement, I agree with you. That's really critical for us to be aware of how our system of government is functioning, uh, to have good, open, constructive conversations that are objective and constructive versus like, I hate you. Um, and uh, I think we can promote things that are like productive debate and also just serve as role models. Uh, in fact, if you guys check out the podcast uh, uh, from last week on Wednesday, uh, it was actually a really nice, healthy debate with me and Antoine about Bitcoin and uh, blockchain. And I think that's the kind of example we want to set, which is we can totally have disagreements, but we can talk very civilly with each other. And we need that um, different perspectives coming in so we think more clearly about the truth. Um, but anyway, coming back to how we can incentivize with ley line points, I think we could do very simple things like, hey, did you register to vote? If you did, boom, 1,000 ley line points. Oh, this is my daughter over here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think there, there's certainly ways that we can help. Um, I, I will say, though, that it is important that we have very clear distinctions between uh, political action and uh, what we do because we're a nonprofit in California. So in nonprofits for, that are classed as 501c3 uh, can't have a political affiliation. It has to be a, a different type of organization. So we are always going to take an objective and neutral stance and, you know, uh, accepting of any, um, any points of view, if that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's just that that like like that that's why because registering to vote is not a partisan thing. Like things so so we can get involved in like like you know like and are blood donations partisan whether you're you know on any side of the political aisle. So yeah, we can just incentivize good. What, what about like like just incentivizing like hey have a political conversation with someone without cursing. And you get 20 ley lines. <laughs> like, like, you know, that would be very that, interesting. You know? That would be super interesting. It's like we have ley line debate night. And it's like every right. cursed word is uh, minus one points. And <laughs> ever, something like, interesting. You, you raise your voice at a certain <laughs> decibel level. And many points <laughs> that is actually not a terrible idea, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, ultimately, we're just going to gamify life, right? We're just going to gamify life. And, like, you know, you up your your good meter right. by doing good things. And then, you like, you right. lower it by doing bad shit. I don't uh, know if you guys yeah. have played, like, Knights right, of the yeah. Old Republic. Um, but, yeah, Knights of the Old no. Republic had, like, the dark side and light side, like, pro right. meter bar. 
And then mm-hmm. as he made choices in the storyline, it would like, you know, move you towards the dark side. Uh, uh, Bi- the Bioshock side. had this the same kind of <laughs> dynamic. Like there were these things called like little sisters. And mm. if you if you decided to save them, you'd get less uh like these these points i forgot what they were called eden or something like that you get less of that but you get a good ending but if you decided to harvest them you get more of this eden stuff but then you get the worst ending so it's like oh. yeah it's it's like i i'll never forget like like one of the phrases in there it said we all have the power to make choices but in the end our choices make us and i just thought Ooh. that was so amazing that's pretty beautiful i like that and uh i also love would you kindly would you kindly has a very new meaning to me yeah that game. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> i uh sorry for everyone that has not played bioshock but man it's a really good game you should check it out yeah, uh sorry to take us on this really wide tangent i, <laughs> I was gonna say i have a comment from ritter in the chat <laughs> to kind of like bring us back around <laughs> um they said i love the idea around ley line but what you described doesn't feel like a ubi to me it feels like an alternative to social security because of the buy-in aspect oh interesting yeah potentially um yeah because uh i was thinking about um, so say like one day in the future where, you know, a lot of people have accounts, like we could just literally say, Hey, every month, we're just going to grant you, you know, a thousand ley line points, uh, or 10,000, I don't know. Um, uh, but, uh, that's like, it's way in the far in the future. I think to, to start, we're going to take baby steps there and then see, uh, what kind of impact that we have. So one of the activities that we will do is we will have some folks uh, on the ground partnered with NGOs in developing nations. So I actually just uh, got connected to an NGO out in India that's focused on educational outcomes for for young children. And theoretically, we can have them uh, on ley line testing it out and essentially get those gift, uh, Bitcoin gift cards. And then we're going to see what happens when you give that much prosperity to an individual or to a community. And potentially that could pay for a whole year of school. Like that's how powerful like these dollars can go. And uh, it's it unfortunately doesn't have as big an impact in the US because our cost of living here is insanely high, but uh, it'll still help. But in terms of the magnitude of impact, it's gonna be so massive in developing nations. Um, Venezuela is particularly disturbing. Um, can you guess the monthly salary or yeah, guess the monthly salary of a poor person in Venezuela? Anybody throw a dollar a, a day? A dollar a day? Other guesses? But it's it's actually three U.S. dollars for a month. That oh, is wow. what wow. the average earning is. Like it is really horrific. So that to me is like such a massive, unbelievable opportunity. And uh, that's where we start. I think we start by you know having this global ecosystem. Everybody benefits, but people that are really, really struggling. Uh, they get to, you know, have their life changed by literally having a phone and then sign up for ley line. <laughs> it's just like change your life, transform it. Um, so, so that that's like uh, something we're really excited about. And at the heart of it, uh, what you realize that ley line is actually just a, um, it's a, you know, money generating engine for people. Uh, and that's why we want to make it like as equitable as possible to get ramped up and on board. And, you know, one of the thoughts is that as we get more marketing budget or partnerships, we'll be able to ship out Fitbits or Apple Watches or whatever. And I'd go to Google and say, hey, listen, we're a nonprofit. We can, like, help a shit ton of people. Why don't you donate, you know, 10,000 Fitbits to us? So, Jeremy, as a nonprofit, that means people can donate to you as a tax write-off or is that something else? That's correct. Um, oh, so at the moment, we are 501c3 pending. So normally that takes about uh, six to eight weeks to get approved. But I think the government's uh, very slow these days because of COVID. Okay. Um, so I think our ETA was supposed to be sometime in this month. So we're literally checking every day to see when it comes through. But oh. as people donate now, we can backdate the receipts uh, so that way it's retroactive. So it's totally legit to do that. So if anyone wants to donate, and I think it's I think it's over a certain amount, it might be $500 is when you can start to do it as a tax write-off. I can't remember. Um, but I think in aggregate, if you do like a whole bunch of different donations, then all of those combine towards your, your total write-off for your income tax. All right, cool. 
Um, and, and, you know, that honestly is the biggest incentive for corporations to, to donate into the prize pools. Like they get the tax write-off, they get the PR value, and they get the brand awareness and acquisition. Ritterbush, it's good to see you, man. I love our conversation about GameStop. I need to get more educated on it. And I also love the fact that you have John Oliver as your, uh, as your avatar. It's so good. He's a wonderful human being. Um, so yeah, other questions about Leyline? No problem. And uh, uh, to close us off, I could share one more item here. So give me a second. Uh, I wanted to introduce you to the student ambassador program that we're running right now in the hopes that if you know any potential uh, students that might be interested in this, uh, please uh, recommend them or send us over our way. Uh, um, so yeah, here's where we are right now. Uh, at, uh, during this week, we're going to be focusing on trying to get our inventory in place. So that basically means that on your profile, as you start to claim your gift cards, uh, we're going to start to implement the, uh, the specific unique leyline items, so the non-fungible tokens. And what we're going to start off with is uh, basically attaching all of our cool art pieces. So you will have a unique art piece just for yourself uh, coming out of our uh, art asset pipeline. So Andrew and Christine have been creating a whole bunch of cool stuff for us. Uh, and you can see our artwork previews with some of our items and backgrounds and uh, other cool stuff. So you could potentially own the banana phone or the uh, bum bag, bum bag. I don't know what the heck that is. <laughs> is that a fanny pack? A fanny pack. <laughs> it's from like the 80s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we got a bunch of items and avatars that are now ready to go. So what we're going to do is as you start to claim uh, the gift cards, you will also get a unique Kaleidite item. And this is a non-fungible token. You probably heard me uh, rave about this. But those non-fungible tokens are going to be owned by you permanently, and you will be able to trade and sell them in the long run. Uh, so once that's in place, we will have an inventory of just all your collections uh, with your specific items. Like um, maybe it's not going to be a grid like this yet, uh, but it's a very minimal to be a list of all of your assets that you own. Um, and you'll be able to see it as well in your rewards history, etc. So you can just mouse over and see your stuff. So that's the focal point because now it starts to create these art collections. And these art collections on uh, the blockchain are already selling for money. People are actually buying these things. And I think it's like, I think they're running like two to $3 million in transactions already per month, which is pretty impressive for a very niche um, product. So that's the focus for this week is getting an inventory in place and then validating the non-fungible tokens. The Nintendo Question? ones? Just, just a sec. Like you can, like the online Switch Nintendo store. It's like you, you. It's for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's. Uh, I think it all goes to your Nintendo account, so it's uh, for the Switch. But I think um, any digital purchases that you make, um, it totally counts. Um, Jeremy, I do believe that Pineapple has a question. Ah, yes. What's up, Pineapple? Okay, so going back to that volunteering and donation sheet, so do we have a plan for what's, what, mm -hmm. like what qualifies for donating and volunteering activities? Yeah. Uh, my, my guess is we, we do need to have a benchmark for how many points we'll, uh, we'll grant for those activities. But I think depending on how physical or how difficult it is, we might ramp up the amount of points that you get. Uh, but we also need to consider if we are going to have a hard cap on points you can earn, because like, let's say you do like a hundred activities, like, you know, it's going to shoot you up to the top and then you take all the gift cards essentially. So we might have a hard cap around, I don't know, three to 5,000 per day or something like that. Um, we're going to have to figure that out. Um, and, and that's the whole point of us te testing this stuff to figure out, hey, are we pricing these things correctly? Is the rate of earning like reasonable? Uh, but yeah, that's, that's why you're testing this out for us to let us know and we'll find out if, you, if there's like abuses of the system. So hopefully my audio is better now. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So then uh, we're going to aim to implement daily sleep check-in, which will be similar to the exercise. Um, and we are trying to implement Grid Republic in order to simplify the um, download and account creation process for Boink. So this one I'm not sure we'll be able to hit this week, unfortunately. That's the assumption is like, hey, if we get these basic things in place and really polish that core loop, then the this is where I'd love to get your feedback is, what is it going to take for you to recommend Leyland to your friends? And we want to make sure we have like great features. It's a polished experience. It's easy to understand. You're getting value out of it. And then you go like, oh, you know what? This is good. Let me tell my parents to do this. Let me tell my friends. Let me tell my sisters and brothers. And the refer friend program is going to give you a ton of perks. So let me see. I don't know if I showed this to you guys last time, but uh, you showed us bracelets, right? Friendship bracelets. Oh yeah, Friendship yeah, bracelets. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, by, by the way, you still have <laughs> so that. Okay, that's the plan. <laughs> that unauthorized message on the site. Uh, it's okay. Which one? Uh, for when you log in? Y yeah, like, I think it's working now, but like, randomly it says on authorized access here and there. Sometimes when you click some of the uh, stuffs. Ah, uh, okay. Like I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Too. Yeah, okay. Could you guys just plug that into the into the support into the channel phone. just yeah. yeah so that way we make sure that uh we've got a ticket in there i cannot remember if we did have a ticket or not um i think we but... do have a ticket going but i think it's good to have more people submit it so they can see how wide i think that's very fair is. so we can bump it up in priority yeah exactly have a paper trail on right on yeah, you can just uh, you can just submit that with our Google form that we have. I will also link the Google form in our live Q and A text channel. Mm, ah, there you go. It was uh, zoomed in the wrong spot. Oh yeah, so this is our refer friend uh, mockup. So the idea is that um, as you refer people, you'll get uh, 450 leyline points for each sign up after they've earned 5,000 points. So you can't just spam a bunch of emails. Um, and then you keep on getting 450 at three, you get the Hydra Trident, and then you keep on going and keep earning, and you get the Hydra Shield at nine, and you can keep on going. And the benefit as well is that we will have the waitlist in place, and right now we're aggressively letting people into the alpha when they're on Discord, but we've still got about a thousand people on that waitlist, so if they want to get in earlier and get access to these prizes, then uh, you have the power to, to, to send it out. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll have like a hard cap on the amount you can send. Maybe we'll put it like at 20 or something like that, but we'll see how many uh, how many responses we get. I love that it shows the status though, if like your friend claimed it or not at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, because there's so many times you'll like refer a friend and you just don't know unless you check in with them personally if they do something. So to like see what their <laughs> status is is pretty good. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be the feature that we basically say, um, okay, cool. We feel pretty good about this core loop, but ultimately before we do this, I want you guys to feel like this is the right path to go. And that's why we'd love to get your ideas on what else we should have implemented on the site before we try to go big. Um, so that's what I'd like to ask you guys, like what questions or what features do you feel like? It are really needed before you would actually recommend Leyland to somebody. And Finished website? Feel free to be brutal. Finished website. <laughs> All right. Well, yes. I, I probably need a bit more specific <laughs> input there. Yeah, I feel like the whole, um, once we get polished, the whole avatar section for yours, and so you can start customizing a lot more and that sort of thing, I think that would be mm -hmm. the best incentive. Because if you get in, it's like, well, you can't really customized yet you can't really we don't have a lot of objects for you to like add to you know what i mean you want it so it's a, a really fun experience right from the get-go got it avatars items other uh feedback or complaints clearly we need to I'm finish the website <laughs> <laughs> say it again robert sorry i missed that a more variety in gift cards ah uh, yeah so actually what would you like to see on the prize pool how much is the Amazon gift card back? <laughs> okay, yeah, we can make that happen. That's no That's problem. That's what I'm waiting for. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I believe that the Amazon and the Bitcoin ones are going the fastest uh, if I were to check on the back end. So yeah, we will definitely rep replenish that. Um, Is it other... to buy a gift card to give to charity? Uh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, we've already purchased a bunch of Kiva gift cards. I don't know if you're familiar with Kiva, uh, but it is a fantastic service. It's basically a micro loan platform where you can invest and give loans to you know small businesses in developing nations and even in the U.S. And what happens is that uh, these businesses get to invest and build up and make some profit, and then they pay back the loan. So then you can actually uh, loan again. So you end up becoming a good guy banker and just keep on giving and giving and giving. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of gift cards there. We're going to load them up soon too this week. Uh, Ritter said, I've already recommended to Leyline. Or I have already have recommended Leyline, which thank you. Um, but they would recommend it to more people if there were stats on the good that's being done. Mm, right on. Okay, cool. Yeah, we've got some ideas there. Um, so a few things we're going to do are your, obviously your individual stats and make them a lot more interesting and visualized. Uh, we'll do more comparative stats. So, you know, we're going to be implementing groups and friends eventually. So that way you start to compare against like rival groups and stuff like that. And then we'll have community oriented stats. So for like, for example, on the home page, sorry guys, it's really noisy in the background. <laughs> it is a little loud. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I got a second. Hang on. Sorry about that guys. Um, so, uh, like, for example, on the home page, what we're aiming to do is basically say, hey, listen, we've got a thousand Leyline users that have now contributed, you know, 500 gallons of blood and 10,000 hours of computing power, which saves like, you know, $500,000 worth of AWS for these scientists. Like we could do a lot of those in aggregate. This is how we're all helping the world. Uh, so yeah, pineapple, you had a question? Yeah. <laughs> How, how about a leaderboard where Jamie isn't like the top of the <laughs> yes. Seriously. Like, yeah. Yeah. T totally, totally. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I think we'll have to form a guild just to take down Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jamie's the ultimate boss. Yes. Um, so, yeah, actually, we, we've been thinking a lot about that too. There's a couple of things we'll do to solve that. One is we're going to put um, rotating leaderboards. So that way there's like daily, weekly, monthly, um, you know, segmentation. Because uh, right now, what's happening is that all the legacy Leyline team like started early because we were testing it ourselves. So we all racked up the most points because we've been at it forever. So, what we're probably going to end up having to do is do a wipe to kind of level a playing field again. And we may need to do that a couple of times. But before we do that, we will always let you guys know and always make sure that we have some way to make sure you're like compensated or can like claim your prizes. Uh, so, at some point, be prepared to like claim everything you can with all the points that you got because we will do a wipe at some point. And that'll like uh, allow all of you guys to catch up and beat the Leyline team because right now we have too much of an advantage. Yeah. What if, like, if you become the top, you get, like, an NFT that shows you kind of, like, beat everybody else to get mm, to the top? Totally. Also, yeah, um, I think what we'll do is we'll have, like, monthly challenges, for example. So mm -hmm. we'll say, hey, this month we want to drive the most, um, I don't know, like, calories burned. And the person that, like, the top five calorie burners will get the unique, uh, you know, I don't know what you call it, those, like, what are those heat warming belts or whatever? <laughs> we'll, create, we'll create an item like that. <laughs> and so you get those things. Uh, or like, you know, the fancy 1,000 pound dumbbells, uh, yeah. ley line items. So yeah, we could definitely do a lot of these fun challenges like that. Um, so that's the, that's the plan. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll try to figure out how to, how to balance that economy. But yeah, be prepared. Since we are in very early alpha, we'll probably need to do some wipes um but uh, no matter what you'll be able to keep your nfts so that's uh for sure and uh actually you know what i have a question how come you guys aren't claiming the gift cards like it's all there do you all just want only amazon ones is that the is that the case because i know people have more than a thousand line points now yeah i still don't understand what to do with bitcoin and that's really the only one because i don't play nintendo or any of those a lot of the other things aren't relevant to me so I claimed the Amazon, and then that ran out, and then I got Bitcoin, and now I don't know what to do with it. So oh, I have no. like a, yeah, I have a string of numbers in a ledger uh, on my uh, on a text 
somewhere, and I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you, you definitely want to, want to claim that. Uh, we actually, I think we have a guide on how to do it, but you can also just DM Jamie. Jamie's the one that purchased them, and he tested them all out, so he knows how to do it. Um, so that, like, to start off, do that, and then we can work on having an official guide there uh, as you're claiming that reward. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this, guys. Uh, if you want to get something that's going to appreciate in value, you should claim those Bitcoin gift cards. It's very, very important that you do that because Bitcoin is on the trajectory to go to the moon. And just holding that is going to be beneficial for you. I'm just saying. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, also, um, I just want to know, my, my computer makes a lot of noise, so I can have it on in a day, but like at night. So it's like that. Then I can like uh, transfer the boink to the phone with the same uh, username and password. So I'll just need to know if there's like a special app or something like that, or the instructions are somewhere there for the phone. So I can keep my phone on at night. My computer is just too noisy. Yes, absolutely. Um, we do have uh, in. I think it's in our FAQ or support channel. There's a pinned um, message. Uh, pointing to the specific APK for Android. Uh, I believe the one that's on the Google Play Store is not as up-to-date, so you're going to want to download that specific APK. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm iOS, not... Oh, you're iOS? iOS. Oh. It's only on Android? I, yeah, it's only Android. Oh, it's only on Android. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, okay. Ariel. <laughs> no just, che just checking. Yeah. All right. Um, you, Ariel but, can actually download DreamLab. They do both, but they're not a Boink project. Hmm. If you've heard of them. Mm. Yeah. No, and, I haven't. Uh, and Pineapple, does it function exactly like Boink, or is it the same volunteer computing? I'm not 100% sure. I just know it's called Dream Lab, and it's by, like, the Vodafone Foundation, or somewhere in Australia. Mm. So that's, so for, I think it's because yeah, it's Vodafone. such a big company out there. That's why it was put on the iOS, but don't quote me on that. All right. Oh, okay. So if you if you have that, you can just like DM me, like kind of like uh, option. I'll just look into that. It may work, may not. Give it a mm -hmm. try. I'll see what happens. Okay. Rock on. Uh, and at some point too, like after we've mastered Boink, we'll also start to onboard Folding at Home. I don't know if Folding at Home has an iOS or or a mobile app, but uh, we'll look into it. Uh, but they do have an open API, so it's actually pretty straightforward for us to do a, an account connection. So you can actually choose if you want Boink versus Folding at Home. It's a possibility as well. Um, so we'll see. And uh, yeah, I think the other thing too is we do want to now focus on activities that you can do via mobile. So that's where I think the volunteering is going to be really key. Um, and then we have the geolocation, et cetera. So it's going to work out pretty nicely. And then Jeremy, so when they wipe those points out, we'll probably have leftover points. Like, let's say, like, if I do $2,000, 2000 leyline co coins, points, and then I have, like, 100 left over, could I, like, send that 100 points left over to leyline? Uh, if, if you created a tip jar? <laughs> and they would yeah. go to waste? Right? I think See? I think that would be saying. awesome, but it probably would not be ethical if we just can print leyline points on our own. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know what? Eventually, after we go live, and like you know, the only way leyline points can be generated are through you know doing good things in the real world. Then it'll make a lot of sense where you guys can redonate it back to us, uh, which we can then actually. What we would like to do is, or here's here's a crazy idea. We have like this community tip jar. And what happens is as we have more content creators uh, posting stuff on Leyline, like, you know, science games and education games, as uh, those games get played and engaged with, they should earn Leyline points for being a good content creator. So now it creates this really good ecosystem where uh, game creators and, you know, particularly like our students on the game jams and hackathons and student projects, they'll post it on there. Uh, and then people can play the games, uh, do some good in the world, earn ley line points, and then the creators get uh, points from the tip jar. Uh, so we want to kind of do that so that way it rewards everybody participating on the platform. Uh, again, win-win-win scenario for everybody. So that's, uh, that's in the future. It's, uh, it's cooking in the oven. It just needs a bit more time. And then with the ley, ley line profile, is there a way for 
users to see where all their ley line points are coming from? Like, hey, yeah, because because I know we're gonna run into that issue a lot. Like, I'm missing ley line points or something like that. And then we can go to their like somewhere in their user settings. They'll be like, oh, I got yesterday. I got 240 ley line points for I don't know from Boink, or I got 10 points for you know what I mean there. Yes, absolutely. We do have a ticket in, and that will be uh, coming soon as well, which is we'll have a um, points history. So when you go into um, you know your actual points balance on the header, you'll be able to click through that, and you'll see the entire records of all of your uh, daily uh, rewards. And it'll be a mix of, hey, you got uh, this many points from volunteer computing. This is your exercise points. And then now that we have uh, these other volunteer activities, we'll just create those categories and say it's like soup kitchen volunteer or like Red Cross volunteering, et cetera. Um, so yeah, that's coming very, very soon. We're get, just going to expose the data um, and then put it in the front end. So very, really straightforward for us to do. And I know it is, it is a pain point because I want to know where the heck my points are coming from. So. Uh, <laughs> It'll be very, very handy. All right. I love these questions, guys. This is fantastic. And uh, are there any more before we wrap up for the day? Hey, is there a way we can see what you're doing on the leaderboard? Like uh, if you're not in the top 20, say you're number 55 or so, let's say 55 in your name. Mm, yeah, Robert, this is a great call. Um, so one thing we'll probably do is we'll expand leaderboards to be, I don't know, maybe 100. It depends on, we got still got to do some performance optimization. I mean, it, it sucks right now because everything's loading. Uh, but uh, we will also probably identify your spot. So you'll always at least know, even if you don't appear in a top 20 or top 50, you'll at least know that, oh, I'm like spot 450. Even though you don't see the whole list, you'll at least know where you're placed. And uh, that'll make it a little bit easier for you to get your social reputation. Okay, if you see if you move it up in the leaderboard or down in the leaderboard every day. Uh, sorry, you're saying can you see it? I said uh, so the person can see if they're moving up or down in the leaderboard. Yes, like absolutely. Like community grid, and I'm like one hundred thousand, but I'm moving up on it. Oh, nice, awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we are, will definitely uh, push for that, so you always know your position. And I think we'll probably also put it on the the profile as well, just to say, hey, listen, you're like you know the top uh, you know five percent of uh, contributors to volunteer computing. You click through to that stat, and then it brings you to the leaderboard, so you see who you're beating. And by the way, if you haven't yet, update your username. You're gonna get a hundred leyline points for it, and then you get to customize your name. So please go ahead and do it, just in case you haven't yet. Uh, so yeah, we got a lot of stuff to do for sure, and we're gonna keep on iterating every single day. You're gonna see new features roll out, uh, and now that uh, we are building this army, it's gonna get faster and faster. So this is the uh, this is the beginning of our like big momentum in 2021. It's very exciting, guys. I'm, I'm super excited. And again, I'm so appreciative of you guys being here and spending the time and, you know, dealing with a pretty rough alpha. Like it is, it needs a lot of work, but uh, you're really helping this become a better product. And just know you have a, you're playing a massive, massive role in what we can do here. So uh, thank you guys. We want to really lean in on this idea of the community is really going to be a stakeholder and an owner of how Leyline develops. And I'm considering things like, um, I think the CEO needs to be super accountable to the community. And at the minimum, what I think I'm going to have in place is like a polling, which is like, what's the approval rating of the CEO? Is the CEO doing the right thing and doing a good job and honest and of high integrity? And the lower the ratings go, the more a chance of me getting fired <laughs> or something like that. Um, but yeah, you know, I think the ability to vote on, hey, these are the big uh, features or activities that we want to push for, um, you know, I really want you guys uh, to have a powerful voice in how this works. I, I love that idea because it's like when we give sales tax and when we pay income tax, it doesn't show us where our dollars are going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, absolutely. so there has to be some kind of accountability. It's like if I'm a part of it, I want to know what happens instead of like, oh, you just like do this one little task over here and don't worry about everything else. <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, Because I believe that CEOs have too much power in the world, and I want to distribute it more evenly to the people. And the way you do that is being transparent and just giving voting rights um, for many things, not just about electing a person, but whether people are doing good and even submit proposals. So theoretically, the community can put together a petition, essentially, and say, hey, we want to do this thing. And then everybody can vote with their, you know, their tokens and make a big difference so so something to think about uh i would love like to get some of your ideas but that is the plan we're going to empower you uh in a very very radical way so that's gonna be a very fun experiment i think it'll probably like create a lot of trouble for me but whatever (laughs) it's gonna be fun to try out at least (laughs) all right uh any last questions before we wrap up Will the engineering team be working on Grid Republic? Because some days I'm just getting like one or two points each day. Which oh, I don't really? Know. Yeah, I'm cool. still. It's still happening. Like just today, I was like, I mean, yesterday it was fine, and then today when I went to hit daily exercise for walking the pet again, I got two random po- ley line points. I was like, oh, oh, that's nice. I'm just special. That's definitely a bug. Uh, definitely f- uh, file a ticket for that one uh, or submit an, a bug for that. Because, e- yeah, I've noticed this too. Some people have like uh, single digit points, which is impossible. <laughs> we only give 10 at a time right now. Uh, so, yeah, let- let's dig into that. I think we're going to look in the back end for that. Um, but good call out. Paco should know about it, though, because I was messaging. Ah, okay, also. great. Good. If I you can pe- follow up with a. If anything. I agree. We're going to rehumanize business. Uh, that's a part of our mission. So, you know, as much as Leyline is a product, it is very much more an organization and a movement in my eyes. And, and that's the learning that I, I came to without realizing it is that uh, there's just something really powerful and beautiful about the culture that we're creating uh, of, you know, abundance and love and inclusivity and openness and honesty. I think that's so important. And when you like the fact that we're really, uh, leaning into that is, you know, creating this really wonderful community, both internally and externally. So it's, uh, it's, it's great to see. And I think we're just getting started. We just like have only, uh, we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. I have one question. Is that uh, Leland like communicating with Boink? Uh, see what new projects are coming out. Uh, yeah, actually, we're uh, good friends with uh, most of the Boink folks. So uh, yeah, we um, we're not the ones that like you know coordinate directly with the projects that are onboarded, but we do keep an eye out on uh, like the news and stuff that that goes on. Uh, what we're doing is actually whitelisting specific projects. So we just want to make sure that the Boink projects adhere to certain requirements. One is that data is secured and protected, that they're following GDPR protocol, like data privacy regulations, um, that the the science that they do is actually public information so that when they, they get results, they it's open for anybody to see. Um, and it has to be directed towards humanitarian causes. Uh, there are some projects there that do like some mining. Uh, so yeah, we're not going to whitelist those projects. Uh, so that way, we make sure we protect all of our leyline community from bad actors. So, so yeah, that's like one of the processes that we're doing. So that way, every every nonprofit that gets onboarded here is vetted, so that you could feel safe in who you're choosing. Like, let's say a new project come up, may come out like uh, folks on Alzheimer's, because we want to uh, know about that. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I believe there are a number of projects that are targeting uh, research for Alzheimer's. Um, so I think what one thing we will do as well is uh, probably in your app connections or settings, we'll identify these are all the projects and the related uh, science area that they're pursuing. And if you want to learn more, we can like kick you out to the website and you can see all the stuff that they're doing. But we want to make it very easy to understand that, hey, this is the stuff that you're actually contributing to and you can choose what to contribute or you know deactivate if you need to. Um, so there are some web controls we have to build to do that. Do you want my document then, Jeremy, that I sent you on Notion? Like the separated by categories and operating systems? But that's yes. just for my reference in case, you know, people do it. Because on the Boink website, 
I don't know, for some reason they won't add that functionality for, I don't know, whatever reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, please do. And I think, if anything, just put on our user guide or FAQ. Um, yeah, the more information we provide, the better. All right, guys. I love these questions. I'm so happy because uh, I'm not done yet. Awkward. Oh, all right. Yeah, go for it, Pineapple. <laughs> Bring it I'm, on. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure this has been asked, but in the future, will we be able to pick specific projects versus just the categories right now? Because yes. I really want World Community Grid really bad, <laughs> but I keep getting everything else in the world that I don't want, <laughs> but that's okay, too. But it works either way, so yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, we'll be able to control it on our side, but in theory, you could actually do it on the Boink application. So you just go in there and, you know, you take out, uh, oh, actually, no, you do it on Science United on their website. Um, so there are the controls there where you could set up. And actually, that gives me a good idea. Maybe we should just kick out straight to Science United. That could be one way to solve that issue. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll think about that. I think right. it's something that's also being looked into right now with the group mm. with Grid Republic, just because with Science United, uh, the nature of it is that you choose categories and mm. then it populates for you. Um, and if you don't want to have to constantly be deleting projects with Grid Republic, I believe there's more of a selection where you can right. pick exactly which projects you want to work for. Gotcha. So there you go, Pineapple. What else you got, man? Throw it at me. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm assuming, I think I talked this with Bex, but you can connect multiple computers to your Leyline account, but you'll still, but you'll only be able to get 240 Leyline points. That's right. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I can connect more than one device. Yeah. <clears throat> and Sorry, yeah, I gotta we... look it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was actually something I wanted to confirm because it's like if someone has, you know, their phone running it, do the hours stack on each other? If you have your phone running for like eight hours and then have your computer also running for another eight hours, are you? Ooh, that is a great question. I don't know. I'm definitely going to have to ask that question. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like instead yeah. of just getting your flat 80 points, would someone get... 160 right. because it's I, calculating double the amount of hours that is being processed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let me, we'll double check whether we're um, combining it or aggregating it. Um, yeah. I, I think it might not be, be something that's like actually we've probably come across yet. So. Mm, yeah. Uh, good question. I mean, uh, actually, uh, Nick, do you mind uh, taking a note for that for us to dig in? Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. No worries. Thank you, Bex. <laughs> okay. Um, so what are we going to do when, let's say, Boink or Science United website goes down, or even if the Leyline website goes down? I'm assuming we just don't get points that day, or what's um, up with that if, if Leyline goes down, that's no problem, because we'll always just query against the Boink database. Uh, so that's, that's not a big issue like even if our site goes down we'll still be able to get the the right um stats coming from boink if boink goes down on the other hand then we have no data to query so that will be an issue um so yeah you won't be able to rack up points at that uh during that time but uh yeah if our service is going down then it's still we'll be able to backtrack uh all the uh contributions that you've made Uh, that's actually it's a good edge case for us to plan for because well right now it's querying the previous days so if you miss if it's down for like two days we're gonna need to adjust that edge case so might be another one Nick if you want to record that too <laughs> we're gonna need a use case uh, in our Zen Hub board <clears throat> okay got it. Um... Uh, there's oh. your proof oh. of me not lying. <laughs> Gosh, I lost thought. My train of thoughts gone. Oh wait, there it is. Um, how are we supposed to be able to catch um people like trying to create multiple accounts on Leyline? 
Very good question. Actually, so we thought through this uh, quite a bit, and we had the same kind of problem over at Blizzard too, with just basically farmers creating thousands and thousands of accounts. Uh, so one, the main way we'll be able to gate that is we need some form of just basic real ID verification. Uh, a most the, one of the more common ones is just SMS verification, where it's like, hey, you know, take an SMS message and verify that, and by doing so, it attaches you to some kind of real-world uh, identity. So that's one way to gate it, but there are also numerous uh, validation services. They call it KYC, which is Know Your Customer, where essentially we would kick you out to a third-party service that you know you submit your verification, they give us a check mark and say, okay, this is a real human being, and then we're good to go. So we don't retain any data. Uh, we just make sure that you're, you know, a human being and then that means you can't spin up like a thousand different accounts because it's tied to your real id um so so that's the plan because we kind of need to do that uh for a number of reasons one is i think we have to be careful about minors and children uh i don't know if like it's legal for us to be doling out cash <laughs> like that um at least in some countries um, other reasons are we do need to know where people are located so that way we adhere to the local re regulations. Uh, so for example, in Europe, um, incentivizing to donate blood or organs uh, is like potentially not legal. So we have to make sure that anybody that's based in France, um, you know, we would close out that type of activity. So, so yeah, that's, that's the, it's important for us to just make sure we're legally compliant, but also it's important to protect us against bad actors that can spin up a billion accounts. So voila, there's a solution. Okay, I got stuff for Nick then. Um, is it possible, you know, on that gift card page, or the, yeah, the Redeem page pretty much, to say like US only or US and Europe only? Yeah, I believe Please. we've already, I think we've already addressed that on Friday, if I'm looking here real quick. Uh, so I believe that there's a ticket actually in it for ready for that. I think we will begin specifying whether or not um, gift cards are actually for the USA or for Europe or whichever region, region they're, um, they're specified yeah. for. It looks like we're I'll, good now, actually. If you go to Redeem page now, I think we've got USD uh, yes. in front of it. Oh, is so. it there already? Yeah, yes. we're good to oh, go. Okay, okay. Look at that bug fixing. Nick, you were amazing. To... It's like magic. <laughs> yes, I, I did it with my mind just now. Alternatively, I managed to clone myself three times, and now I'm working at three times the effort. There you go, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, I forgot who our Canadian user was, but uh, we've now purchased some Canadian gift cards as well. And, you know, we'll do it based off demand. So uh, I'm sure... Uh, we actually have a pretty uh, significant Lat Latin American community uh, building up in the in the channel, but uh, we want to make sure that they have ability to get some local currency. Um, but our, you know, the the general approach is that again, Bitcoin and Ethereum are globally accessible. It can be converted to any local currency that you want. So that kind of solves a lot of problems of just making sure that we're not a U.S. centric only uh, product. Um, we're we're starting with the U.S. and Canada, but we're going to expand to pretty much every country eventually. We're just going to knock it out one at a time. So there you go, pineapple. Okay. All right. Eventually, we'll have all like a lo long list of gift cards on the page eventually, yeah. or all of them, hopefully. And not not just gift cards. We're going to get a ton of stuff coming in from our sponsors and partners. So more than likely, we'll have uh, more coupon codes for NZXT. Uh, we've got some educational courses as well uh, from Geek Therapeutics. We're going to get some free games from other partners that I cannot uh, disclose yet. Uh, we actually, uh, I don't know if you guys know New Blood Games, but they do these like retro first-person shooters on Steam, and they have like overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. Uh, so yeah, we met up with uh, their CEO. He's like, yeah, I love this. I'm going to donate some games to you guys. So yeah, we'll have some key codes in there uh, soon enough. Uh, but yeah, the more and more partners we rack up, we're, they're going to just donate some like random cool shit into the prize pool. So you get to browse around and see what you like. 
Um, and that's where this will start to turn into the marketplace where uh, you'll be able to get these codes and get these prizes as well as your NFTs and you start to trade it if you don't want it. Um, and then that way you start to earn uh, points and then eventually you get to start earning money as we evolve the platform. So that's the vision. That's where things are going to go. Other questions, guys? Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. But also, if somebody can't think of a question right now and it comes up, you don't have to wait until our Q&A session. You can always <laughs> yeah, hit us up right. on Discord. We're always on. We're always answering questions. True. It's not um, to die. Did you, you probably haven't had time, but did you look into that free rice game thingy, donating I mean, thingy? I mean, chances are, I mean, if that person Dang answering it. the questions by the time I wake up, then I... <laughs> I, I get to it whenever I can get to it. I don't know. I don't sleep. I don't know <laughs> totally. what you're talking about. Yeah, but yeah, no, I'm extremely... Go to sleep. In the Discord. If you have any questions, hit me up. Thank you, Nick. Uh, and Pineapple, to answer your question, I did not get a chance to check out that... Uh, it's a game, right? It's a donation game? Mm -hmm. for your yeah, it's been, it's been around for quite a while, I know. Mm. But other than that, I want to say it's yeah. been around for... I remember playing Maybe. it when I was like in grade school. I want to say more <laughs> yeah. than ten years at least. Yeah. What's the What's the concept again? Like, how How does it all work? Um. Oh, I gotta remember yeah. it. You uh, rice. you it, uh, you answer grammatical questions, and every time you get a question right, it donates a grain of rice, and then you fill up bowls of grains of rice. To oh, donate. cool. Yeah. So you, it's I educational, it. but also donating food. I love it. Yeah, and actually, that's a, that's one of our plans too is to open up, um, you know, all these different games into the arcade. So I think that'd be a perfect fit, perfect match. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I think we'll start to reach out to those guys. You know? Yeah, um, it's been around for quite a while, and I see they actually have they've added a lot of more categories. Okay, never mind. It's been a while. That's excellent. I love it. And, Thank uh, you, pineapple. Ritter, so Ritter's going to close us out with the hardest question of all. All right, do it. How do you keep your hair so amazing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I don't know, dude. Uh, it's, uh, I just moisturize. I... <laughs> no, just... Hydration is key. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, it's uh, honestly, like, I haven't gotten a haircut in, like, two months. Uh, so it's really getting out of whack. So... Hopefully, I can figure out a way to do that without getting COVID. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> uh, so, but yeah, thank you. I mean, I would love to see your hair, Ritterbush, but uh, for now, I'll just admire John Oliver picture, which is quite beautiful, too. But my favorite picture has to be David's because Judy Dench is fantastic. <laughs> In cats? <laughs> it's so uh, good <laughs> yeah. um but uh but anyway uh thank you guys this was so this is so great um to get all these questions and the engagement and i commit to you we're gonna be fixing and deploying new shit every day every single day we're gonna make this product better and better and we're gonna make you proud that's the plan <laughs>